In 2000, India had a million working traditional potters, more than any other country in the world. Since then, rapid development has resulted in changing consumer demands for unglazed earthenware pottery. This short film presents a Muslim potter's family from Kutch, the desert area of western Gujarat. Potters live in extended families, each member contributing to the many stages of pottery production. This compound in the village of Lodai is inhabited by three brothers, their families and parents. Clay is collected from the local lake and beaten by the potter's daughter into fine powder. The dry clay is mixed with water, sieved and kneaded to form a plastic consistency ready for wedging and throwing. There are strict divisions of labour between the sexes. Women are responsible for clay preparation and decoration as well as assisting with general work. Muhammad prepares a mound of clay to make a batch of water pots. He uses ancient techniques dating from the Harappan civilization and handed down over many generations. He divides the clay ready for throwing. The spoked wheel is made from wood and cement and rests upon a pivot in the ground. He turns it while squatting, engaging the pole with the notch. The speed of the wheel depends upon the skill of the thrower and can maintain its momentum for 10 minutes. A wide range of vessels are produced here to fulfill the needs of local communities. There are pots for storing liquids and dry grains, cooking pots and pots for ritual ceremonies of birth, death and marriage. Next day, the pots are dry enough to begin beating. Muhammad uses a stone anvil held inside the pot and beats the outside with a wooden beater to thin the clay wall and shape the form. Beating takes place in several stages, with drying out periods in between, each time the clay wall becoming thinner and the form more refined. After the final beating, the pot is smoothed with water. Finally, Muhammad traps air inside the pot to give it a fuller form. Muhammad's mother paints the pots with red clay slip. Born into the potter's caste, she married a potter and would have learnt these skills from a young age, the continual practice giving her speed and dexterity. Potters in Kutch are highly regarded for the quality of their work, especially in the rich and varied tradition of decoration. The women divide the pots into horizontal bands and fill each section with painted designs using elaborate systems of lines, dots and motifs. They work whilst chatting and keeping an eye on their children. Throughout India, potters either fire in the open or use rudimentary kilns. This is a triangular-shaped kiln with its apex at the front. Raised up on a bed of ash, it's sited at the far corner of the compound. Muhammad digs a pit into the ash and piles it around the edges, forming a wall to enclose the pots. The main fuel for the firing is brushwood collected from the indigenous wild thorny bush. Straw is cut and compressed into the bottom of the pit, followed by a thick layer of brushwood. The crucial decision of placing pots is only taken by Muhammad or his father. Each pot is carefully placed upside down and supported on a shard. All potters in India make use of their shards or broken pots. Here, the grandsons cover the pots with shards, which will help to retain the heat during firing. Over time, these potters have developed techniques to pack the maximum number of pots and fire them with a minimum amount of fuel. Gradually, over the next few hours, the pit is filled until the pile is 90 centimeters high and contains 300 pots. Packing a kiln is labor-intensive work and requires all members of the family to help. Harabai, Muhammad's wife, 
rakes up straw from the yard and throws it onto the pile. Ash is shoveled onto the kiln, which will help to insulate the pots during firing. The fire mouth is the neck of a water pot into which Mohammed places burning straw. It's late afternoon and the firing will take about 14 hours to burn through. He sprinkles water around to prevent it igniting too fast. Unpacking the kiln reveals this has been a successful firing with only three pots damaged. The film was taken in 1997 and is already archive material. When I returned in 2010, many of the potters had stopped working. The introduction of plastic and metal vessels has replaced the demand for utilitarian pottery in all but the poorest and most remote communities.